Welcome back. At the end of the last part, I mentioned that Cramer's rule can be used to find the inverse of a matrix. And so what I want to kind of walk, walk you through during this part of the lecture is how this connection is made and to come up, come up with a new formula for finding the inverse of a matrix. So our starting point is the following observation, namely, if A has an inverse, as an inverse, a inverse, then the jth column, then the jth column of a inverse satisfies the following property. So that satisfies this equation, ax equals ej. Right? And so remember what this means. This means the vector with all zeros except for one in the jth row. So here's the jth row. So the jth column of this matrix is a solution to this equation. And let me just give you an example of this to kind of, kind of illustrate this idea. So if I were to take this matrix and I told you, okay, here is the inverse of that matrix. And if I just take the second column of this matrix and I compute A times the second column, what I will end up getting is the second basis vector. I will get 0, 1, 0, right? So I will get E2. If I instead, I had, instead of putting this vector, I had put this vector coming from the first column, then I would have got E1 and so on. So there's a nice consequence here is to find the jth column of A inverse is you need to solve Ax equals Ej. So this is kind of just a different interpretation about solving uh, for the inverse. So what this consequence here is saying is you could actually do it column by column. And so if you wanted to find the inverse of A, you would first set up, figure out what the first column is by looking at Ax equals E1 and finding solution. Then you would look at the second column. You would find the second column by looking at Ax times E2 and so on. So you're just going to move all or move your way through. So we want to be able to figure out this a solution to this system of equations. And so this is where Kramer's rule can be used, all right? because we want to be able to solve this equation. And Kramer's rule actually tells you how to do this. Well, the i-th entry of column j of A inverse, right? So remember what this is. This is a solution to Ax equals Ej. Well, you can just solve that by figuring out what the determinant of the matrix that you get by replacing the i-th column with Ej and dividing it by the determinant. Okay, so let's look a little bit more carefully here. We know how to compute the determinant of the matrix. Can we say anything slick or fancy about the determinant of this matrix right here? So how is this matrix formed? Well, as, as we know, we have the i-th row, sorry, the i-th column is replaced with the basis vector ej. So the one here is in the j-th row. And Kramer's formula says we well, need to compute the determinant of this matrix. Now we know from our properties of computing the determinant that you, one way to compute it is to do a cofactor expansion. And normally you want to do a cofactor expansion down a row or a column with lots of zeros. And you can't really get any better than this. We have zeros everywhere except in this one spot right here. So when we do uh, cofactor expansion, and sorry, the, there's a typo here. It should be the ith column. When we do the cofactor expansion down the i-th column, we get that the determinant of this matrix is equal to minus 1. And where is this particular 1 located? It's located in spot j comma i. So we raise negative 1 to the power of j plus 1. The value in that spot is 1. And we're multiplying it by the determinant of 
A, J, I, right? Because we're wiping out row J and uh, column I. So maybe I'll make a note of that. Um, uh, column, column J, row I, oh, sorry, I got it backwards, column. Should be, let me re start over there. We are removing row J, column I is removed. And sometimes we rewrite this expression as simply CJI, right? And so this is also called the cofactor. We actually have mentioned this before, also called the cofactor. Okay. So just to kind of summarize here, we're looking at it, trying to find a solution to this equation right here. We need to be able to figure out all of the values of this guy as we're changing the i. And the ij entry of the inverse of our matrix now is given by the following formula. It's given by the cofactor cji divided by the determinant of a and i want you to notice that i did not make a mistake we have ij here so this is talking about row i column j and i definitely want cji on this side okay so i'm i want that particular cofactor so note the subscript are reversed. Okay, so it's important to keep that in mind. So to summarize here is we get a formula for the inverse of a matrix. Because every entry is divisible by the determinant, we can actually factor out the determinant of A, and then the matrix that we end up with is C11, C21, up to CN1, and then here we have C12 up to C1N, and over here we have C and N. Okay. Now, don't as I mentioned, the, the subscripts kind of get reversed as you're moving along. So this may look a little strange compared to what you're used to. But the the C I J is referring to this particular formula right here. And so the order of the subscripts is right. And this part right here is sometimes called the adjoint of your matrix. So we have adjoint of your matrix. And so here's a more compact way of writing our formula. The inverse of your matrix is one over the determinant of A multiplied by the adjoint of your matrix. Okay. Uh, so here we have a new way of computing the inverse of a matrix. It's a highly theoretical tool because in fact, you don't really want to use this to compute the, the inverse except in small cases. It's because each of these values inside of the matrix involves computing the determinant. Oh, you don't need to see the uh, Dropbox notification. Um, I will be giving you kind of a more detailed exa example in the next part of the lecture, but it's good to know that you can compute the adjoint using Octave, and you can do it just by entering the command adjoint A. So there was a kind of a lot of theory here. The takeaway is there's a formula for computing the inverse using determinants. And in the next part, I'm going to do a worked out example for you. Okay, I'll see you after the break.